The college football world was once again turned upside down today after John Wilner broke the news that USC and UCLA are strong candidates to join the Big Ten by 2024. This sends yet another strong signal that we're heading towards super conferences. I believe this was inevitable. I think most of y'all do too. With the way things have been going, I don't believe that super conferences is this monster everyone else thinks it is or most people think it is. So let's play a game called Everybody Be Honest. There are maybe three to four teams that can actually win a national championship each season, maybe three to four. So cutting down the field does make a little sense. But I believe you're gonna see four 16-team mega conferences. You're gonna see the Big 12 and Pac-12 combine to make a conference baby, and the playoffs will be expanded to at least 12. Now, there are gonna be some teams that are power five right now that get left out. This is gonna give us some new matchups that we haven't seen and it's gonna create some rivalries we didn't think could even exist. But make no mistake, the old school way of college football is officially dead. Go ahead and bury it. And while we may not recognize the sport that we all fell in love with for the most part, that doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad, th bad thing. If your wife gets a boob job, that's a big change, but it's a good one. Not all change is bad, you see. And in the scope of trying to crown the top team, to me, this does nothing but help tighten up the process. Look, David, I'm going to bring David and Blaine in here. We're going to get to the Booster Club. We got Coach Bryant Vincent, new UAB head coach, joining us here in a couple minutes. But what an absolutely insane day. To me, this is what you're going to see. Four 16-team conferences, as I mentioned. You're going to get a merger from the Big 12, Pac-12. There's going to be some teams that are left at the door. You're going to have a 12-team playoff. I think you're going to hear some of the names of the conferences stay the same. The SEC is already at 16. You got Texas and Oklahoma. And I know people out there are going to say, you are nuts for not thinking they're going to add teams. To be honest with you, anything can happen. But I do think it's going to stop at 16, at least early. It gets expanded to 12. So if you look at it, you get six on one side, which means how many from each. You don't have to be a mathematician to do that. That's three. What worries me a little bit about this is the travel. Like I'm having a hard time understanding how USC and UCLA to the Big Ten, I know uh, Nebraska's right there in the middle, but to get to 16 teams, you still have to add teams, and it may be a little bit of foreshadowing cone that they may be building a bridge from California out there to the Big Ten, <laughs> and I don't know who they're gonna add, but there's some teams uh, that I think are pretty capable. Well, we thought it was awkward when West Virginia joined the Big 12, right? I know, right? This blows that out of the water geographically. Not even close. Remember one year ago, guys, we were at SEC Media Days, and the news broke that Texas and Oklahoma would be joining the SEC, and that was historic. I think a lot of things, a lot of wheels were in motion at that time. There's no telling how far back this goes to get two schools like this to join. And I remember a conversation, I've been thinking about this a lot ever since we were at SEC Media Days last year. I remember a conversation I had with Coach Lloyd Carr after I had already graduated from Michigan. Mm -hmm. We sat down for breakfast one morning, and he said, this was 2011, this is over a decade ago, he said, this, the, the future of college football is going to be mega conferences, right? That's the phrase he used. That, that, now, that's a decade ago, and you still have SEC, Big Ten, Pac-12, you know, things, uh, Pac-10, uh, Pac things look similar to, they, to the way they did 10 years ago, but this is where we're going. So I don't know if we're going to see four, four mega conferences of 16 each, or two with 20 to 25 to maybe 30 each? I don't know. I mean, you, you made a good point where you said not more than 10 to 12 to 15 teams can actually win a national football championship, but there's so much more to consider here than just football. Think about what UCLA may bring for basketball. I mean, there's a lot at play here. That's true, and, and I look at it through the football prism, obviously, because most of us look at it through the football prism, and we still have a situation now where some teams are in different conferences in basketball than they are in football. We, yeah. we still have that. But to all the people out there, and you're going to have a, a bunch of people out there that are just going to hit the roof. They are going to panic. This is going to absolutely ruin college football. Sometimes, just because things change doesn't make it worse. Because mm -hmm. if it always stays the same, to me, you can never get better. You'll never at least know. The people that fear, I am more scared about NIL than I am about mega conferences. I agree with that. I'm way more worried about that ruining college football than mega conferences. Because again, Right now, the way it's going, the way it's set up, there's, there's three teams. Again, maybe four that can win it. Now, I don't know how much exp expanding the, the conferences, the mega conferences, to me, I think if you have four quality conferences, you're going to create competition in each conference because they're not going to take a school in there, in my opinion, that's not able to succeed. So then you ask yourself, 
where does Vandy go in the SEC? What happens there? Does the SEC go try and replace them? I'd kick their ass out right now. But I'm see, sorry. They add a lot of value other than in, just football, though. In and what? A lot though? of schools are like that. I mean, they're top two in golf every single year. They're not bringing any money. Five in they're not bringing, I'm talking about school sports that bring money. They don't care about golf. They don't care about baseball. They care about basketball because it brings money. Again, SC, the, Vandy is robbing the SEC. They're the smartest people in the league, and you know what? It's working. They're, they get more money for putting on horrible performances in the sport that brings home the most bacon. So if I'm the SEC, Vandy, let me tell you a story about the time we kicked you out. Yeah, no, I mean, look, you're not entirely wrong when it comes to Vanderbilt. Uh, and the, you know, each school brings something different, and these are still academic institutions and all that stuff. Are they, though? Are they? They're academic institutions. This is what, this look, what I'm saying. Listen, XFL needs to take over and be listen, full minor league for the NFL, student, and let's look, just look, have that. Look, it's in, in college football? Yeah. Academics comes first. Guys. Yeah, that's what they said. You're a it student first, first comes and first. you're an athlete second. Yeah, that's exactly that, if right. If you're listening on audio, make sure you go watch this. Yeah, episode, yeah, right? we're doing um, it in first order. Okay, so um, what else was I going to say there on that front? Uh, well, a few things. I have to read off a couple. The Twitter's undefeated. It's undefeated. Always. I have to read a couple. It's absolutely undefeated. Nothing says classic Big Ten football like that Rutgers UCLA matchup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hey. doing it. <laughs> someone, someone said, "Yeah, but volleyball will be lit." <laughs> yeah, it's gonna. Be <laughs> All right, here's the. One. I'm surprised the Big Ten didn't go after the Detroit Lions. <laughs> Look, I bet Detroit. I bet the Lions would have finished hey, fourth. Here's a good one because we were talking about this a lot over the last year. What about the Alliance? They looked each other in the eyes and they shook hands. Remember the alliance? Yes. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, the promise Real. ring. The and, promise ring. And this one, at what point does the conference get a name change? Okay, I think what you're going to... That, to me, is the most interesting part of this whole deal. So you're going to have SEC. I think if you have the Big 12 and the Pac-12 combined, I think they'll call that Fox. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think, FOX. I think one of the other conferences, they're going to call that one ESPN. ESPN. And whichever one Notre Dame decides to join, you know what they're going to call that one? NBC. Okay. That's what you're going to get. That's Welcome what it comes America, down to, right? fellas. I mean, are we wrong on that? No, That's ESPN, Fox, to. NBC, and SEC. It's the TV, the That's TV what you're networks gonna get. control all this now. What about the other teams left in the Pac-12? You yeah, it's good, a good question. Like Oregon. 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 Oregon needs to get out right now. If, well, Utah needs to get out right now. It's, a, mean, it's a great question because if you look at the Pac-12 right now, they've got, they're going to have to find two teams. And if I'm San Diego State, I'm sitting over saying, y'all losing USC? Y'all need SoCal, baby. Y'all need it. Then does the SEC, they're at 16 with Texas and Oklahoma, no, correct? No, I don't think the SEC adds more. You don't? You don't think, you don't think nope, they could think go they get a Clemson? If they could get a Florida State? I'm not saying they drop, couldn't go get it. They I, could drop. If it, again, we're playing hypotheticals, because does anybody know what's going to happen? No. Really no. not, but I think there's the best chance of the 4-16 team situation. Okay. So what, I, what I'm saying is, when you're the SEC, if you were going to go more than 16, to me, I get in the car, I go call Clemson, I go call Florida State, I go call Miami, and I call Notre if Dame. If you're who? If you're which? If I'm the SEC. Oh, okay. I, if I was going to add more than 16, but now I, the, the 16 the SEC has, I think is perfect. But if you were going to add more, I'm calling Clemson. I'm calling Florida State. I'm calling Miami. And I'm calling Notre Dame. I'm not calling North Carolina because guess who has to come with North Duke. Carolina? Duke. Duke. And I don't want them over here either. They're Vanderbilt in disguise and they're better at really? basketball. Really? With all they bring for basketball? No, for that basketball. Yeah, money. yeah, yeah. I said outside of basketball, they're Vanderbilt in disguise. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> when I look at that in Notre Dame, people say, wait, what do you mean? If I'm Notre Dame, you just had your winningest coach in history leave to go to the SEC. Yeah. You want to know what a great clapback is that? All right, BK, you know what? Open up the door. We're coming into town. Let's see how it goes down. The but SEC? The, look, the SEC. Bill, what a great Join clapback. the Big Ten. What, what Notre is, Dame, why are, you, why are you putting this off longer than it has to be? Just because, just look, to play Michigan for Notre Dame's the girl in the bar that thinks she's a nine, but she's really a six. Sometimes she's a seven when she literally dips her face in a Stop bowl it. full of makeup to convince everybody. But that's that's... That's who they are right now. And once they join a conference, you know what? It's like Coach Rick Vice said on Division Three, and you'll be better men for it. <laughs> Last point here. If there, are five, if there are five Power Five conferences, and if we're thinking that four of 16 each or some number like that is where we're headed for college athletics, do you think that the like these conferences are just saying, okay, we don't have to be the number one conference in athletics. We just have to be in the top four. We just have to not be last. That's so when you look at the what um, the uh, Big 12 and you look at the Pac-10, you look at the ACC especially, are those all thinking like, okay, who's the weakest link? Like, how can we just not be the weakest link until one of them caves completely? We're in the top well, you four. Do, you know what you do? You do what they did in the Dark Knight when the Joker snuck his way into the thing. You remember he pretended he was dead and then they opened up the thing and took over the guards and the last two that were alive, he got that stick and broke it in half and he said, you know what we're going to have? Tryouts. Well, let's <laughs> think about if you're a team Try not. Tryouts. You think about if you're a team not in any of those conferences. You're screwed. It, well, you were screwed to start with. Screwed. You're screwed. Okay. Coastal, 
Screwed. Okay, Coastal's not winning it. Boise State? Co Screwed. You know what, to me, I think it's better because they need to form their own championship to me. Okay. If, you, if they're going to go to super conferences, and who knows, Blaine? Somebody could swallow up Coastal. You never know. But at the end of the day, none of those teams are winning the national championship. Cincinnati's the best group of five team we've seen. I don't care, UCF. Look in my face. I don't care. I don't care. Cincinnati would have beat y'all. So, to me, if that team can't stop Alabama when Alabama's running plays from the third day of fall camp the whole game, then I just don't believe they'll ever be able to do it. So, if you're a group of five, you need to have your own championship. I really think you do because you're not winning it. You're from Statesboro. Georgia Southern's not winning the national championship in, in college football right See, now. See, and they used to do double A. That's exactly that's the right. Thing. I'm from South Alabama. Let me tell you a hint. Love Kane Womack. South in your mouth. I'm all about it. They're not winning it. Blaine went to Western Colorado. Here's a story about a team that's not going to win it either. So, again, again, not wrong. it's realistic. It's legitimately realistic. Because if I'm watching a race, let, let's really think about it. If I go to the track and I want to watch a race and there's 30 people in the race, and 15 of them are just slow and average, I don't want to watch that. I'd rather watch 10 people that are really fast race against each other. So what happens when basketball season comes around? See, that's a totally different animal. I, 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 to me, it all goes into one pot, obviously, because you're going to the conference. But different teams are stronger in basketball than some, some are in football. So there's way too much going on right now with the basketball argument and the football argument because they bring different things to the table. But right now, just looking at it from a pure football standpoint, because that's why it's going, it's a pure football standpoint because that's the most money that gets brought in. And again, markets. Markets are like, massive. Think Ruckner's got added to the Big Ten. You get the New Jersey market. Exactly. I mean, we're talking about Houston, uh, Orlando. Missouri you, to the yeah. SEC, you get St. Louis. Okay, yeah, exactly. And so when you see what the Big 12 has added, when they add Houston and when they add Cincinnati, I mean, the, 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 you know, you have to be market focused as well because, again, it's about the TV network. Yeah. But. Well, I tell you what, somebody else's focus is a brand new UAB head coach, Bryant Vincent. We're going to bring him on. Good friend of ours. Uh, was very fortunate enough to coach with him. Uh, coach Bill Clark obviously had some uh, uh, back issues that he's getting dealt with. Uh, really hope he's able to recover. We all know. I mean, you don't realize how important your back is until it gets hurt. Yeah. But we're excited to talk to him. But, Cone, to your point, to your point, you will have some schools that realize that in football, when we make this move, it may actually up our football program over our basketball program if our basketball program is overtaking our football program right now. I think you could legitimately see that. What I'm really interested to see is the TV rights and the way that this thing works out. All right, hey, if you like what you heard, go ahead and ring that bell. Turn those notifications on. We're bringing it every day daily from 2 to 3 Central, and we want you here. I can hear it ringing now.